Well, hello YouTube and welcome to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be exploring this set of gouache paint from Rosa Studio. So if you want to explore it as well, stay tuned and we'll get started straight away. Okay, so I picked up this set of Rosa Studio gouache paint for a song. Um, I paid uh, $10 for this set of paints off of walmart.com. I got some other uh, acryl gouache off of michaels.com and there are several places online that sell the Rosa Studio gouache. So Rosa is a Ukrainian company that makes paint. They make watercolors and they make acrylic paints and they make oil paints, and they make gouache paints. So somebody had commented with curiosity on my channel about whether or not Rosa was still manufacturing paints during wartime. And I did a little research on the company and on this line and on the gouache. And I found out, I'm really happy to report, that yes, in fact, Rosa still is manufacturing uh, paints during wartime. In addition, I found out that there are several iterations of this set. For instance, I have here the classic set of gouache and there's like a modern set of colors available and I forget but there's different sets just like their watercolor palettes they have different like palettes of gouache available and they're available at several different retailers online so have a look around I was also curious about the Rosa studio line of paints so Rosa gallery is considered their professional line or at least I thought and so I wanted to see what Rosa had to say about their studio line um, and it is just that Rosa says their studio line is uh, paints that are appropriate for use in studio work and also for student practice. The information, um, the pigment information and light fast ratings are on the box. So this is definitely paint that can be used in professional work. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see what this gouache paint is all about um, for $10. All right. Okay, I've got my ceramic mixing palettes all fresh and clean and ready to go. And I've got um, some paper towel here for me to use. And I'm going to be swatching with, um, I like to swatch with this Princeton number no. two flat brush. And um, yeah, that's my go to swatch brush for gouache. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, titanium white. I'm going to pull some out on my palette here. So I want to see what this is like straight out of the jar. I, I'm i sort of anticipating it to be like hemi gouache, like jelly gouache, because that's kind of what it looks like. But at, at first brush, it doesn't feel that way. Um, so this is a titanium white PW6. It has uh, a light fast rating of three, which would be excellent. And it is not terribly opaque. We'll see how it dries down. And I suppose I should um, give myself a black line all the way across so we can see uh, the opacity of the gouache. Let me do that real quick. Where were we? Okay, so we'll do um, the black next. And this is PBK7 with a light fast rating of three. And I expect this one to be opaque, and it is. I do wanna mix this with a little bit of white and see what kind of gray we can get. See what that opacity looks like. Okay, so far, two down, lots more to go. Okay, make sure they're, all that black is out of there because I'm about to dip into the yellow. So next up is yellow light. This would be PY1 and PW6. It says that there is some white mixed in there, but this uh, appears to be pretty transparent, as most yellows are. Uh, so if you are new to gouache, um, you can use it straight out of the jar or tube. 
However, the best way to use gouache or the most recommended way to use gouache for traditional gouache painting is like melted ice cream. So you want your gouache to get that consistency of melted ice cream. Um, so here is the yellow light and it's a light fast rating of good, which would be two. And I want to add some white into that. Um, when I'm swatching gouache, I like to um, mix the colors with white and then I like to also mix them with black just to see uh, a little bit of the range that I can get from each color. Uh, it's quite surprising, at least to me, every single time when I swatch it that way. Um, I see things that I wouldn't expect uh, to get out of these colors. So this is um, the yellow light with a little bit of black. And generally, um, yellow with a little bit of black is going to give you a green. And what I'd like to do is, just because I'm here and I like to swatch, um, is add a little bit of black into the white mixture. See kind of muddy olive green maybe that we can get there, yeah. And that's, yeah, and this is how I like to swatch my gouache, especially when there's a limited palette like this. There's so much you can do just by adding white and black to uh, a limited palette and not even like mixing, you know, a color wheel mixing. So yeah, you really don't need a huge set as, as tempting and as attractive as those giant sets are. I too have full set syndrome, you know, uh, no shame, don't get me wrong. But I mean, it's true what they say that you really don't need, um, you don't need that many colors. All right, so now we've got red, which is PR254. This is a light fast reading of three, which is excellent. And reds usually aren't very opaque either. Um, but this one, yeah, this is pretty opaque. All right. And we'll grab a little bit of white to mix in. Oh, that's nice. I have a lot of water in there too, so I don't have a lot of, um, there's not a high pigment to water ratio. Um, that's quite watered down. And I'm impressed with the, the pigment load of these paints so far for as inexpensive as they are. Uh, generally, that's what's going to uh, fluctuate in the paints when it fluctuates with the price. It's going to be the amount of pigment that is in the paints. Uh, that's generally what you can expect. Wow, okay, that's a lot of black, but we'll go with it and get that deep, deep, deep red, even though deep red is up next, but that's nice. I wanna add a little bit more red to that and see that color. Um, kinda like this, uh, yeah, deep cherry red. That is pretty, okay. Yeah, and I want to add in maybe a little bit of white to see what that is. Okay, I'm really liking the range of reds there. And that's just with one red and, you know, black and white. So now let's try um, the red deep. You have to start wiping off the palettes. Red deep is next. And this is PR 112 and PR63 colon one, and that's not a pigment I'm familiar with. Um, PR112, yes, PR63 one, no. So this is going to be um, a more blue red. So this will be your cool red. That was your warm red. This will be your cool red, this red deep here. And with a little bit of white, 
Mm. Yeah, that's a very nice blue-red for sure. This with the ultramarine will probably make some really pretty purples. And I want to try a little bit of black now that we know how strong it is. Ooh, that's pretty. And got a little white with it. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okie dokie. Now we'll go on to the green and the blue in the next row. Wow, these are really lovely. I'm very impressed so far. Um, I want to do a second uh, coat, a layer of the white and see how that is working, you know, because the white is not very opaque. It seems more like a mixing white. So let's do another swipe of that. You know, and I wouldn't even mind adding in a little Holbein white. Like, that's a lot of times what I'll do because not all sets come with a white. So I, you can always add in a white that you like more that's more opaque. Not all sets come with a white. So, um, for instance, I recently uh, got the Holbein Winter set, and that doesn't come with a white. Um, and I don't think the autumn one did either. So I added in, you know, my own white. So if you want to make these paints a little bit more opaque, you can certainly use a more opaque white if you want. I mean, there is no rule against <laughs> doing that and mixing, you know, paint types. Um, so anyhow, uh, Green Deep is next. And um, yeah, Green Deep is PY3 and PG7 and have a lot of paint here got excited and da, da, da. just dropping in for a quick voiceover because I was entranced and quiet while I was swatching and mixing this green. To me, it was really, really beautiful. And I absolutely loved the color that I got when I added the black right here. So the next one up is Ultramarine, which would be PB29. Um, swap that out. So, um, they are listing that they put a little bit of PW6 in there. Uh, PB29 is typically transparent. It's going to be one of your more transparent gouaches, uh, ultramarine. So, incidentally, um, and that white certainly helps it out, and the consistency is beautiful. See, there it is. That was just a little, a lot too watery. But this is the consistency that... Um, generally is recommended for gouache. I mean, of course, you can water it down and use it more like a watercolor um, and layer it that way, or you can layer it on heavily. I mean, there's lots of ways to use it. It's interesting. Um, an interesting thing is that um, I'm adding white now to the ultramarine, and what this does is actually creates a color called smalt blue. And... Um, it's a pop smalt blue is a popular color and all it is is ultramarine plus white so if you ever wanted uh smalt blue and it was out <laughs> of stock you can simply mix it by uh, mixing your pb29 and pw6 and you'll get smalt blue and with uh generally with a lot more um ultramarine in it so a lot more ultramarine and less white. That's more of a smalt blue right there. Of course, there's, it's gonna be more transparent now that I've added water to it. Um, and then I wanna add a little bit of black in there. Let's see. Let's do a little bit more. So yeah, this is a really lovely range of colors that I'm getting so far. 
And I, I am very impressed with this. This is exceeding my expectations. Um, so this is now raw ochre is next. And that's a lot of water there. So raw ochre is next. And it's PY43, a light fast rating of three. And PY43 is commonly known as yellow ochre. That's quite opaque. That's nice. And um, so it's commonly uh, known as yellow ochre, but this, they're calling this raw ochre. And um, mix it with some white. And do a little bit of black in there. That's lovely. And I want to um, try black straight into the raw ochre just a bit and see what we get. Well, that's just so watered down. And I'm going to mop that up and do that again. That's just too much water. Here we go. Swatch in next. There you go. And then finally, last but not least, before we get to go paint, is the deep brown and this is PR 101 and PBK 7 so this would be like an Indian red PR 101 with a little bit of PBK 7 to make it darker and uh yeah that's deep brown this is really a nice set of nine colors that they have picked out um there's a, a lot that uh, you can do with this set uh with just these nine colors. Um, this is a really nice set of gouache. If you were ever curious about gouache, um, I normally would recommend always to go with like, you know, really good gouache to get started. And I would recommend this is really good gouache to get started with. This is not, this is not, um, wow. So far, this is exceeding my expectations, but I do want to paint with it. And so I'm going to clean up and I'm going to let the swatches dry. We'll take a closer look and um, yeah, then, 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 then I'll paint. All right, so I began by mixing up a background color of yellow and white. And this was just opaque enough for me. It was opaque to be a background, and it was transparent enough to save the sketch of the birdcage, which I needed it to. So I really appreciated the properties of this gouache. Uh, specifically, the fact that I was able to water it down enough to do some pretty fine detail, uh, considering it was gouache without losing the opacity of uh, the colors at all. Uh, you can really see that on the fish tank there. Um, I was really able to get some fine detail uh, in the end. You'll see I do some more work on it. And then also um, with the accessories in the birdcage. And you'll see me do some detail as well on the shelves. And then also on the Christmas cactus here coming up. This gouache was easy for me to layer without accidentally or unintentionally reactivating the gouache underneath. However, I was able to reactivate when I needed to to correct mistakes. And I had great fun with the colors and um, layering and painting this little Christmas cactus. Um, I found that the colors in this set really harmonized together and I was able to use all of the gouache on my palette to do these little accessories, to mix them together. And I wasn't having to constantly pull more gouache out of the uh, jars to use. So I, you know, really felt like the gouache went a long way, a little went a long way. Incidentally, I kept the uh, jars open the entire time I painted, which was a couple of hours. And they did not dry out at all, so I don't know what's up with that, but uh, I really appreciated that as well. Uh, here I am fixing a couple of mistakes. Like I said, that was easy to do. 
And I have to tell you, like, this was the most fun that I've had for $10 in a long time. Uh, this gouache was so easy to work with. It was just a pleasure. And I just wanted to keep painting and keep doing more and more details. And I really had so much fun. Uh, generally gouache is kind of hard to do detail work with and rely a lot on other medium to do that or media to do that excuse me uh, but here i was able to do so much of the detail work with uh this gouache it acted like a gouache and almost like a poster paint as well it really had uh, it had its time to shine right here i had this last minute thing to do a cross stitch picture and i tried to sketch it out and erase it and erase it and erase it ultimately i ended up doing an embroidery but unchanged the squash was like you know it was it, it was just bulletproof um it, it was yeah indestructible like the soul of the the ukrainian people again uh it just indestructible this this squash i couldn't be happier i hope you give this squash a try um i i'm so happy this was so much fun i really wish i could get my hands on some other sets and i will try to again soon Thank you so much for spending some time with me today and please give me a thumbs up before you go and until next time everybody which will be very soon take good care. Bye!